As of this week, there is a free update for EasyFog and EasyMapper for those of you who already have it. I'm going to show you what's new, how to use the new features, including automatic atmosphere lighting for EasyFog, and the ability to paint puddles in EasyMapper, along with a few other bug fixes. Before we get started, I just want to let you know that EasyFog, EasyMapper, and the brand new EasySnow are all 30% off on the Epic Marketplace for the next week. So now's your chance to get them all for cheap. Easy Snow is your go-to tool for adding highly realistic snow to any level, making it a breeze to art direct heavy snowfall, light flurries, or blizzards in seconds. You'll find the link to all of these down in the description below. So let's get started with the small but handy update to EasyFog. If you've updated EasyFog in the Epic Launcher, you'll notice that there is now a Use Atmosphere Color slider right here. If you set the value to one, it will automatically shift the emissive color of the fog to the atmosphere color, meaning it speeds up your workflow when using EasyFog. Because previously, if your sunlight in your level was adjusted or you changed your lighting conditions, your fog kind of looked like this. It, it wasn't great and required manual editing of each of the fog cards in order for it to match the lighting of your environment. That is why I implemented this update, to make your life a lot easier. This gives it way better integration into existing sky systems that you may have in your level. I could have made it a toggleable button, but I opted for a slider instead in the spirit of keeping things as art directable as possible. But personally, I recommend sticking to zero or one. I also cleaned up the folder structure a little bit, when you add EasyFog to your project, it comes with a demo level with mountains and such to showcase its usage. But if you don't want this lying around in your project and adding unnecessary bloat, you can simply delete the demo folder here. So small update, but should really improve the general quality of life when using EasyFog. Next, we have some changes to EasyMapper. This update actually came out a few months ago, but I never got around to making proper documentation for it until now. I've gotten quite a lot of questions about people not being able to add their own custom texture to EasyMapper. For example, if I try to drag and drop the texture into the material instance, you'll see the box here turned red. This is because you need to use the correct master material. You'll see here I have a regular master material and the underscore VT master material. VT stands for virtual texture. So if you have virtual textures enabled in your project settings and your textures are VT as shown in the texture thumbnail right here, then you need to use the VT master material. One thing to be aware of is if you are still running into the red box issue here, if at some point in your project you enabled virtual texture support in the project settings, but then you turn it off later, just because the VT icon doesn't show up in a texture, it doesn't necessarily mean that it isn't a virtual texture. Take a look here. If you mouse over right here, you'll see virtual texture streaming true. This means that it is, in fact, a virtual texture. The way to fix this is to select the texture you want to convert. So right click, go to asset actions, edit selection in property matrix. And in this window here, you can uncheck virtual texture streaming. Once you do that, you won't be experiencing the red box issue anymore. So to recap, be sure to use the correct master material and the appropriate textures, VT or non-VT, in its respective master material. I also added support for non-ARD textures. And for those of you who are new to this, ARD is just a shortened term for ambient occlusion, roughness, and displacement. Because each of these maps is a grayscale map, you can pack these three textures into one single map, one map per RGB channel. It is a great method for better memory management and all of the mega scan surfaces you get from the Quixel bridge use this approach, which is why I designed EasyMapper that way. But I'm aware that not everyone uses this approach and not everyone knows how to make their own ARD maps. So I added a checkbox here that gives users the option to manually input regular grayscale maps for ambient occlusion, roughness, and displacement. It is a simple addition, but really handy. And lastly, I added the ability to paint puddles onto your surfaces. You'll see right here in the material instance, we have a use puddle layer checkbox, which opens up a new tab at the bottom here, exposing a bunch of controls for painting puddles. Puddles are painted onto your mesh using the blue vertex color channel. If you don't know how vertex painting works in Unreal Engine 5, I recommend watching the initial tutorial I made for EasyMapper to learn how to do this. But really it is as simple as painting the blue channel on a model, 
and you'll get puddles added on the top layer of your stack. Something to be aware of is, let's say you're painting the blue channel and nothing happens. You don't see a puddle, nothing's showing up, it could have to do with the initial height or displacement level of your underlying materials that you blended. So you can adjust the puddle height adjustment slider here, or you can reduce the displacement intensity of materials A, B, or C. There is no one size fits all approach here. It's all dependent on your own custom displacement maps and the height value that you're using. So just be aware of that. So that covers it. I hope you found this video handy. Again, the entire easy collection is 30% off on the Epic Marketplace for the next week. Thanks so much for watching everyone. And as always folks, happy rendering.